Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum and today I am filming at the clearing of the Armistice in uh, Compagnie, France. We're taking a look at, well this is a site that would have some relevance to World War I and also to World War II. So let's take a look around. This clearing was created as a memorial to the end of World War I because this is actually where the Armistice that ended World War I was originally signed. Now, like I said, this would also have some relevance in World War II because this is also where the French Armistice in 1940 was signed with the Germans, um, and not accidentally. So if we take a look at what's actually going on here, this was, still is, in the middle of a fairly heavily forested area. Uh, this was behind the Allied lines, and this was chosen as a place to, to negotiate the, the terms of the Armistice, or rather for the Germans to be given the terms of the Armistice and decide if they wanted to agree to them or not. So this was a, a railway intersection, and right over here, uh, the pillars there, where we have some tourists standing, uh, that is where a French train car came in that was outfitted with, uh, as basically an office for Marshal Ferdinand Foch and a number of other Allied officers. And then over here, right there, we have a second train line where a train car came in carrying a number of German officials uh, who were to negotiate on behalf of the German government. And they actually arrived on November 8th of 1918. Um, the, the negotiations that led up to the armistice had their start actually in October uh, through the Swiss as a, a neutral player. And by November 8th, the Germans had sent uh, a, a, a group of dignitaries, basically a group of negotiators here uh, to make the final arrangements. And they arrived here, they spent several days, they communicated terms back to Berlin, and eventually on November 11th, they agreed to an armistice. And the terms were that the, the fighting would stop five hours after the armistice was signed. And it was signed at about, uh, well, at six in the morning, finally. Hence the 11 a.m., 11th hour of the 11th month of the 11th day end of World War I. Here in the very center of the clearing, we have a rather large stone message that was left. And it's a little difficult for me to get a good view of this because it's well, in large letters and flat on the ground and I'm not supposed to climb up on top of it. Uh, but what we have here, uh, how this reads, is basically uh, here on the 11th of November 1918 succumbed the, uh, the, the criminal attempts, the criminal enterprise of the German Empire uh, ended by the free people that they had tried to oppress. A rather, uh, <laughs> a rather elegant statement um, and uh, not particularly friendly to the, the Germans. So the French rail car, uh, where the armistice was actually signed, was parked right here. This is actually where, where World War I ended. And then it was kept on display here for a, a number of years. Ultimately it was moved to a little carriage house back over there behind the, the trees, uh, just to protect it uh, from being out in the elements all the time. Now, when, uh, when France succumbed in 1940, Hitler decided to use that exact same rail car for the signing of the, the French surrender to the Germans in 1940. So they brought it back out uh, onto this spot. They went ahead and signed the, uh, the armistice documents there. And then Hitler had the car shipped off to Berlin where it was put on display as a war trophy. Um, ultimately, it was burned down in 1945. Um, I, it, it, sources vary. It was either burned down by Hitler to make sure that it wasn't captured or on his orders, um, or it may have actually caught fire accidentally uh, during the American occupation um, of Berlin, right, right at the end of the war. The statue here of Marshal Foch was actually not erected until 1937. Um, however, interestingly, it's still here and it's still completely original. When Hitler had uh, the ceremony here in 1940, after the fact, he had the entire place basically destroyed. Um, the, the central, uh, that, that stone message in the center was broken up, the, the carriage was taken out, um, the little monuments where the train cars had been were destroyed. All of that was rebuilt after World War II. However, Hitler had the statue of Foch left intact, and in fact had it protected by uh, basically a wooden 
um, cover, a wooden shield put up around it, uh, when, they, when they used explosives to demolish uh, much of what else was around here. And uh, apparently that was done because Hitler had been, Hitler was a World War I veteran and apparently did have uh, some respect for his French adversaries, the, the fighting soldiers and their commander at that time. Now, the other explanation is uh, apparently he was also, uh, had, had the idea that Foch should be left here intact um, so that he could watch over the destruction of uh, the monument, that uh, see what ultimately came of it, which was, well, they rebuilt it after the war, but Hitler's idea was that uh, he should have a position watching over this empty, destroyed monument. All right, now we're going to take a walk down to the other end of this monument, where there is, I think, quite the interesting uh, memorial set up. Now, I should say, there is a very nice little museum here, and inside it they have a, a really excellent replica of the actual train car where both of these signings took place. Obviously they don't have the original because it burned down in 1918 or 1945, but they have a car from like the, the same original series production from the period, and there are a bunch of original artifacts from the signing that are still in there. A lot of those artifacts were, uh, were hidden away in 1940. The French kind of had an inkling that uh, the Germans would be showing up here. So they couldn't hide the train car, but they did hide a lot of the artifacts. Anyway, all that stuff is on display, along with a whole bunch of pictures and World War I uh, interesting artifacts. And if you're interested, this is definitely a cool little museum to visit. All right, I think maybe you're starting to see, uh, see what we've got with this memorial. This thing really pulls no punches. So, at the top we have 11 November 1918, and at the bottom that translates to basically uh, for the heroic soldiers of France, defenders of the rights and the fatherland, um, the glorious liberators of Alsace and Lorraine. Those of course being the two German, or the, the, the two uh, border territories between France and Germany, which Germany uh, took and occupied after the Franco-Prussian War, and the return of which had motivated a, a huge militarization in France up until World War I. Anyway, beyond the inscription, the actual memorial itself uh, really, like I said, pulls no punches. There, that is the, uh, the German Imperial Eagle there, dead, skewered with a sword, and uh, draped across the monument. So they, uh, they really kind of got that one across. The Germans uh, destroyed this as well in 1940, no surprise, uh, but it was rebuilt after the war.